As we said previously, the ratio of s squared to sigma squared is chi squared distributed. That is, chi squared is roughly distributed as n minus 1 times s squared divided by sigma squared, where n is the size of the sample from which s squared was calculated. This gives us some insight into how we might calculate a confidence interval within which we think the population variance sigma squared lies. We can bound the ratio n minus 1 times s squared divided by sigma squared above and below such that the probability of the true value of the ratio lying in the interval is 1 minus alpha times 100 percent. We can do this by bounding our ratio between chi squared degrees of freedom, uh, 1 minus alpha over 2, on the lower bound, and chi squared for a particular degrees of freedom, alpha over 2, on the upper bound. Recall that chi squared degrees of freedom 1 minus alpha over 2 is a value on the chi square axis associated with alpha over 2 in the lower tail, or 1 minus alpha over 2 in the upper tail. Naturally, chi square for this particular degrees of freedom 1 minus alpha over 2 is a smaller number than chi square for that degree of freedom alpha over 2. Therefore, it is the lower bound of the interval. But we don't want a confidence interval for n minus 1 times s squared divided by sigma squared this ratio that we've been talking about, we want a confidence interval for sigma squared. To isolate sigma squared, we first have to invert the ratio and thus invert and switch the bounds from the rules of arithmetic. So now, sigma squared divided by n minus 1 times s squared is bounded between the two uh, ratios that you see on the screen. Note the inverse of the bigger number becomes the smaller number and vice versa thus the logic behind switching the inverses of the bounds. Then we multiply through both sides by n minus 1 times s squared to arrive at the confidence interval for sigma squared. That is, sigma squared lies between n minus 1 times s squared divided by chi squared for the particular degrees of freedom, alpha over 2, on the lower bounds, and n minus 1 times s squared divided by chi squared for our particular degrees of freedom, 1 minus alpha over 2, for the upper bound. As variance is sometimes less intuitive than standard deviation, we can simply take the square root of both bounds to find a 1 minus alpha times 100% confidence interval for the population standard deviation, as you see on the screen. The confidence interval for population variance doesn't exactly follow the pattern of point estimate plus and minus the margin of error that we've been talking about previously, but the idea is the same. For example, assume that a manufacturer of car batteries claims that its batteries will last on average three years, but is curious about the variance of battery life. A life testing experiment with n equals seven batteries found the battery lifetime shown on the screen. The variance of this sample is s squared equals 0.88 years. We first need the chi-square values for degrees of freedom equals seven minus one or six. These values are 14.449 for 0.025 in the upper tail and 1.237 for 0.025 in the lower tail. The 95% confidence interval, as you see on the screen, is 0.365 to 4.268 years squared, or 0.605 to 2.066 years. That is, based on our sample of seven batteries, we're 95% confident that the standard deviation of battery lifetime lies between 0.605 and 2.066 years.